This is Hunter Henry, tied in for the Los Angeles Chargers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, baby. It's football time. Save me. Save me. I haven't slept in three days. Welcome into the show. Thursday, November 5th. Still football time. Always football time. It doesn't matter how many players these teams have left. They are going to run 11 of them out there. And, uh, At we a do, time. We Sometimes do, 12. Yeah, if you need a timeout. Yep. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Welcome into the show. If you'd like to watch it, you can do so on YouTube. YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore is here. He is present. I am excited. I think yeah. this is going to be a great show. I think our starts are good. I think our taking it to 100 are great. I, uh, I've never... What about the middle? A better boom boom in mm. my life. You've been talking a lot about the boom boom this week. <sighs> it's a rhyme that beats all rhymes. I uh, yeah, I just I uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we can look forward to it. We've got the matchups this uh week 9 that we're going to be talking through. Some news to get into. Mike is a bit tired. I I'm never It wasn't your best. It's football time. <clears throat> uh it that's was your fair. worst. That's that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, lucky I remembered to do it. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I wasn't sure. Hey, a reminder for those of you listening, FootClanGiveaway.com. We're giving away a signed Kenny G jersey. I am not sure how many days left on that giveaway, Brooks, but it is between one and a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. That okay. is correct. Right. It is also free uh, to enter. Yeah, and the giveaway is free. Like when you win it, we don't charge you for it. Looks like yes, 20, free to enter, 24. charged to win. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just just pay this five hundred dollars shipping and handling. I've, is that the that's like the game show? You win the you win the thing on the game show, and you got to pay like thousands yeah. in taxes. Yep. Now you're bankrupt. <laughs> Congratulations. En- enjoy your car. All right, let's take it to one hundred. Taking it up to one hundred. Presented by Head and Shoulders, available at Walmart. All right, we're taking it up to 100. Now we already reflected on it. We really don't need to reflect on it again. Probably but, should. But Mike did. Oh, uh, he hit with Brandon Ayuk last Hi, week, Ukin. and uh, we're all picking a player we think will take it up to 100 for Week Nine. And I will kick it off for us with Robbie Anderson. I think Robbie Anderson against Kansas City will take it up to 100 after he was bestowed praise by every fantasy mm-hmm. football player that had him. Uh, three straight games outside the top 30 mm. for Robbie Anderson, which mm. is surprising considering the targets still there, 5, 8, 8. But it, he's just not panned out for fantasy players. If you watch the games, a lot of those are short area targets that you know he's not breaking a big play, no touchdowns in that run. But I think he gets it going, takes it to 100 against Kansas City this week. And I am going with rookie sensation slash he's done it once, Henry Ruggs the third. This is a game that I want pieces in. I really believe that this game is going to crush. I love Herbert. I love Derek Carr. The Vegas line is high. The defenses are bad. And if a lot of points... Go on the board in this game as I see it happening, then I can't imagine there's not some deep ball to Nelson Aguilar or Henry Ruggs, and I'm picking Henry Ruggs. He's a guy that I think you can you can get on waivers in plenty of leagues, and if you need a start, you could end up throwing someone in your lineup that has a monster game. And mine is similar to that. I'm going with rookie Darnell Mooney from the Chicago Bears. It's not necessarily a name that every single fantasy player knows, but you should get to know Darnell Mooney. This dude has flashed a couple of times, including an actual fantasy relevant game last week. 
Uh, but here's the thing. He has seen five or more targets every single game since week three. And for the Tennessee Titans, their defense against uh, fantasy wide receivers. Week one, you, you looked, oh, man, the Titans. The defense is strong there back. And then they have just crumbled. <laughs> since that uh, week one performance against Drew Locke, they're giving up the second most points per game to the wide receiver position. That gives me some confidence that Mooney could hit. On a on a big touchdown, and I, I can't put like Allen Robinson. Yeah, not, <laughs> it's my take. You know, one hundred player. Hey, I've got good news for you. Not just have they given it up to the wide receiver position. If you remember my start of the week last week with T Higgins, and the stat is specifically they are they are. Far and away, oh, no one all, can remember that stat. Jason. Yes, of all thirty-two teams, we don't have thirty minutes. They are the team that always is getting crushed by the wide receiver too. So this is, uh, you know, a t telling for Darnell Mooney. Well, and I think that the transition to Mooney as the two might have happened two weeks ago because his snap counts have gone up from the sixty percent range to then eighty-one percent. And last week, sure. he was on the field for ninety-three percent of snaps. Uh, he's a good player. Uh, unfortunately, he has Fulton Reed at quarterback. So it's like one in five deep balls land in the vicinity of Darnell Mooney. But if you hit... Then that's why he's taking it up to 100 player. He's a guy who's probably on your waiver wire right now, and maybe you're struggling. Maybe you need some turbo in that flex Need some moonshine. Oh, that's kind of the opposite effect. Yeah, that's true. All right, take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how our up to 100 picks fared. News and notes from around the league. All right, lots of COVID updates. Mm. couple of huge ones yesterday. Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Kendrick Bourne are all going to miss the game tonight. Oof. Now, you remember the uh, the 49ers went to the Super Bowl, right? Yep. I do remember that. Are you aware that there will not be an offensive player on the field tomorrow that participated in said Super Bowl? Well, that was, a, in fairness, they were in the Super Bowl, well, how many years ago was that? That was, uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was last year. That is correct. So you have right now, George Kittle out, Ayuk, Samuel, born out of the game. Jordan Reed, I don't know if he plays. I don't think so. Uh, this is unbelievable. And Trent Taylor, I believe, is the only active roster wide receiver available at this time. Richie James will probably be activated for the game. And then you're looking at, um, you know, peanut butter dwelly time again. Because, oh, yeah, peanut butter dwelly. And I, I don't mind it. Dwelly. I don't mind it. Ross Dwelly, tight end. If you have never heard the name, I don't blame you. But if we don't have Jordan Reed active tonight, how do you not throw you, him out there? You have to consider it at the, at the very least. And honestly, I mean, Jarek McKinnon should get work in the passing game because yep, he will has to. <laughs> uh, Matthew Stafford was placed on the COVID-19 list. Another big breaking news piece. Uh, I have retracted my stream of the week due to him not playing now. Now, well, he in, still should be able to play. If the timeline is that if he if all of his tests are negative, he will be there. Obviously, he's not practicing. We know because of the Thursday night game that these wide receivers for the 49ers, they are OUT already declared out. Uh Stafford is unavailable right now, and they are hoping that he still starts. That is up in the air. If not, Chase Daniel will start. All right, the Texans closed their facilities today due to a positive test. And so you'll want to pay attention to that as well. Some quick injury updates. Christian McCaffrey, a full participant. In or out, Christian McCaffrey. Expectations. In. <laughs> uh, why don't you elaborate on your reluctance, Jason? I, I'm, well, I'm reluctant for uh, a number of reasons. One is the fact that a lot of people thought he would be able to be back last week. He was practicing last week, didn't get in. Um Mike and I have a nice matchup against each other this week, which I would really like Christian McCaffrey. And I have Mike Davis as well, so I don't know if Mike is hoping Christian McCaffrey plays and is eased back in and you get 50-50, but the reality is if Christian McCaffrey is active, you're going to start him, and he's going to be great. All right. If you saw that Alvin Kamara popped up with a Q on your uh, platform, don't worry about it. He says he stubbed his toe and he's going to play. That is an intense... Stubbed toe. We've been there. 
Everyone's uh, been there. Yeah, but I didn't get an injury designation after Man, it. You weren't playing running back either. <laughs> you didn't need an injury designation for sitting on the couch, Mike. Yeah, but when I stubbed my toe sitting on the couch. <laughs> Michael Thomas, you expect him to play. I do. I do expect Michael Thomas to play. Last week he was participating with the wide receiver core and not looking limited and has had no setback, so I can't imagine why he wouldn't play this week. Going back to Kamara, they say it's not serious, but an injury did pop up midweek. Do you do you look and see if Latavius Murray is, is out there? Or you're yeah. just not even concerned about it? I'm not really concerned about it, but you are getting to the time of the year where you might want to. should be picked up You anyways. should probably have Murray on your bench as you get ready for the, the, the home stretch. All right, uh, Matt Breida, who we talked about yesterday being next man up in Miami, looks like next man down in Miami. Oh. Didn't practice on Wednesday, and Brian Flores, breaking news here, hamstrings are tough. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and uh, it's a hamstring injury, so he, he could be limited. Alan Lazard, uh, he is on the team's flight to play. I don't think any of us are playing him tonight. No, but th that's an excellent sign, and we talked about him on the waiver show of – just remember how good Alan Lazard was through those first three games. And I think Aaron Rodgers will be very happy to see Lazard back on the field. Okay, and then uh, Watkins. Sammy Watkins back on the practice field Wednesday. So something to monitor for maybe just Mahomes having another weapon in the offense. Sure. A reminder to take your Thursday night players out of the flex. Put them in a positional spot, a running back wide receiver spot, so that, you know, no more important year than this one with all the COVID news, the late breaking COVID news happening mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, and, and there's players, especially in tonight's game, that you, you would feel like, ah, if you've got to play McKinnon or someone like that, you don't, you don't want to put him in your running back spot, but do it. All right, let's get into the forecast. Fantasy Forecast. All right, a reminder, the week nine bye, Bengals, Browns, Rams, Eagles this week, so no games to break down for them. The Denver Broncos at three and four take on the Atlanta Falcons sitting at two and six. Falcons are three and a half point favorites. It's a 50 point over under. Oh, congratulations, Atlanta. I like them in this game. They have been playing a lot better. They have. They should have won all their games uh, since Dan Quinn left. And, uh, In fairness, they should have won a lot of their games when Dan Quinn <laughs> yeah. was there. Yeah, that's the worst because as a team, you're sitting here two and six, and what you have three close losses. Mm -hmm. Two and six, absolutely. They they definitely should have beat Dallas in week two, Chicago in week three. I mean, they were up massive in those games. You think Dallas at this point regrets uh, coming back in that one? Yep. <laughs> From a draft perspective. All right. Uh, Let's look at this game and what we think is going to transpire for fantasy purposes. You know, Jason put me on the spot last week after I complimented Drew Locke, which he just didn't. He couldn't stand it. You couldn't take it. And you asked me, would I be willing to throw him out here? Now, he was somebody that when I looked at the streaming quarterback options this week, I, I did a double take. I said, maybe this is an opportunity against the team that gives up a lot of fantasy points to quarterbacks, 23.2. Uh, Fantasy points as 29th in the league, the Falcons' defense. Uh, but Drew Locke's just not been consistent enough for me in the touchdown realm to feel comfortable there, and we all have him very uh, very much outside the top 15 this week. Yeah, he, but he is streamable. I, mean, I don't know how deep your league runs, but he is someone you can at least consider, or or you just look at that and you have, uh, you have some more confidence in, say, Jerry Judy. Uh, Jerry Judy has been getting involved, had decent target share. Let's see what's going on with Tim Patrick, who the other wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, he missed last week. Those guys become somewhat interesting uh, against this Atlanta Falcons defense because of Drew Locke, that, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm playing Drew Locke, more because there are other guys on your waiver wire, like Kirk Cousins, that I'm, I'm more interested in playing. Yeah, and, and I, I would – I would add, if you look at the last couple of weeks, you know they they gave up a top twelve performance in every single week the first six weeks. Uh, the last two weeks, while Dan Quinn has not been there, mm -hmm. neither one has been a top uh, not top fifteen performance. Yeah, they, I remember we were bringing that up with Teddy Bridgewater and that to the moon possibility against Atlanta. So, and the truth is, is it's still a little bit difficult to sort through the Denver offense as a whole for fantasy purposes. 
I think Judy, you know, makes the most sense to take your shot, but you had big plays from Deshaun Hamilton last week. You had a touchdown from KJ Hamler. Uh, you have Tim Patrick involved in the offense. You have Noah Fant involved in the offense. When you talk about like how much is there to go around and who you're depending on, I don't think you go much further than Fant and Judy. I agree. It's it's Fant and Judy. End of list. I mean, as far as you know, re receiving options. I think when you're looking at Melvin Gordon and you're looking at Philip Lindsay, you could plug one of them in if you need it. It would be Melvin Gordon first, but uh, Fant, Judy, that's it. Yeah, Atlanta is allowing the second most running back receptions in the league. That's Melvin Gordon's territory. Lindsay has just looked great, so he's kind of forcing his way onto the field, which takes away from Gordon. I had a had a hard time thinking a couple weeks ago. I was like, man, do you trade for Melvin Gordon? He was he had missed the game, and do you look in the second half for him to you know take a step forward with Drew Locke? And I just I didn't have confidence, so I didn't mm. go after him, but. Uh, because of Lindsay. Lindsay yep. is annoying. He is very good at football, which is annoying for those that want Melvin Gordon to produce. Sure. It, I will have the, the word of caution, though, if you're chasing the points of Philip Lindsay. Because, oh, he's a top 12 running back. This is a running back one. He had nine opportunities last week, was on the field 45% of the snaps. Maybe that forces the, the issue of they see, oh, Philip Lindsay's actually a very good player. We need to get him on more, but that remains to be seen. So I'm not. I'm not playing Lindsey with What about confidence. last week, though, when he had nine opportunities as well? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what you're going to get with Lindsey. That's, so, that's yeah. what I mean is it's uh, – of the two, I'm still playing Gordon. No doubt. I think we all agree there. Uh, Matt Ryan in this matchup facing this Broncos defense, 21st in terms of points given up to the quarterback position. Atlanta's at home. I feel pretty okay with Matt Ryan as a back-end quarterback one this week. Is Julio Jones playing? <clears throat> yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> well said, Mike. Well said. No, it it is good. The Broncos have um they've been beatable at wide receiver and quarterback. They've been pretty stout against the run on the totality of the season. Now last week they gave up a ton to the running back position for the Chargers, which was Justin Jackson. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um and so may maybe there's a shift happening or maybe that was the outlier. Um that that makes you question Todd Gurley if you Watch the game, and Andy blew my mind yesterday in the studio because we watch the game. We watch all the games. That's our job. And I had Todd Gurley going against him, so we've got a special eye on it. And it was if you had Todd Gurley, you saw he just wasn't there. Yeah, he got he was, benched for about three quarters of that game. He was absent. He was benched for three quarters of the game. The commentators were saying, "We don't know what's going on with Gurley. We don't know if he's hurt. He was nowhere." And then Andy was like, "How many carries do you think Todd Gurley got?" And I was like, I don't know, 12? He's had 18 carries? Did I vet you? I should have vetted Andy on that. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a mouse click away, so you can do it right now. But, yeah, Todd Gurley is scoring. And, unfortunately, you know, it is a – if you listen to Atlanta Falcons fans talk about Todd Gurley, they don't talk positively about what they see on the field. Watching Todd, Early try, Todd Gurley try to get the edge – Watching him uh, try to be elusive, you know, there's a lot of Brian Hill fans in that in that community, at least in terms of getting him more work. But at the end of the day, production has been there. So you're going to start Todd Gurley. You may wince. You may not see him on the field for a drive or two. He may run out of bounds when he needs to go, you know, go down inbounds to win a game. But I would prefer not to play Todd Gurley this week. Like if I had, if I got uh, somebody off the waiver wire, you know, Justin Jackson. Like, oh, yes. Give me Justin Jackson. Chase Edmonds. Oh, for 100%. sure. Chase Edmonds. Jamai David Montgomery. Probably. Yeah, I would play. What, Jamichael what Hasty. Jamichael Hasty was the name I wanted to say because you could have you gotten him off the wire. J.K. Dobbins. At 100%. Okay. These are guys what I would about, play. What about uh, across the field in this matchup? Melvin Gordon. I would play Todd Gurley over Melvin Gordon. I have Todd Gurley ranked a few spots ahead of Gordon. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll – Man, Todd Gurley's been bad on the ground. I'm looking at his game logs here. 2.4 a carry, 2.7 a carry, 2.6 carry over his last three weeks. The reason it didn't feel like he had 18 carries was because he finished with 46 yards. Yikes. He's, and yet in that span, those three games, his attempts pace, rushing attempts on the ground would be 325 on the season mm -hmm. for a total of 832 yards on those 300. That is just – that's how you lose football. Yeah, it's, and yet at the same doing? time, it's like, you know, you you – would rather go with that than Philip Lindsay's nine opportunities. 
Yeah. Just, uh, one, yes, totally. The uh, For the pass catchers, though, for for Atlanta, Calvin Ridley didn't practice Wednesday. We we saw him leave the game with the, the injury uh, a couple weeks or last week. Any interest in Russell Gage here as the replacement player? They're – you know, the Broncos are pretty strong against fantasy wide receivers. Last year, we had a stretch of games where uh, Ridley was out and the targets came for Russell Gage. While Julio was there and Ridley was out, he had 25 targets in three weeks. It did not amount to a lot of fantasy success, but that's something we look for. I, I would rather be sure that targets are coming his way. I think Russell Gage is a flex option this week I, right. I do want to bring up though there's two weeks this season already in which he played without Julio Jones in the lineup and was entirely irrelevant two for 16 two for 26 I don't know if last year is is, is the template that we're seeing this year with Hayden Hurst involved and some other options um, I would avoid him myself Hayden Hurst has been just around he's, I mean he's he's, he's a, fine he's the tight end he's nine fine. on the week for us he's the tight end eight on the season and he's Top 10 finishes have been 9, 7, and 9 at the tight end position. All right. All right. <laughs> Are you encouraging him? Are you encouraging us? Uh, everybody. Like, that's fine. If I'm, if I'm getting that, then, uh, then it's okay. Hayden Hurst is the reason that you trade for Darren Waller because he has proven that he is one of the, uh, let's say, 10 best tight ends to start and also – he stinks and isn't going to help your fantasy team. Actually, that is he's a perfect trade ship because you can you can convince somebody with a higher tier tight end that they can take Hurst plus some other option and right. and and upgrade and you're like, "Hey, he's been fine. He's a top 10 tight end." Yeah, absolutely. Pivot. Yeah, is the offense is getting better. Dan Quinn's gone. Oh, you yeah. know you want Hayden Hurst. Yeah. Before we get into the next match, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Ensure you are taking care of your body hair, your nose hair with the new performance package the performance package it's the best value that manscaped has to offer included in this new package is the weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer it's waterproof 9000 rpm motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system jason do you mm. know what any of that stuff means it means it's powerful it means i don't but i know that the hair will be gone they're going to take care of it they have a proprietary skin safe technology it helps prevent nicks snags Tugs, things you do not want to happen when Correct. you are trimming body hair. The Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer is the best trimmer on the market. I have one. I have been using it for quite some time. It, uh, they, they are correct. It is the best body hair trimmer on the market. And right now, if you get the performance package, you can receive two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag because you want to put all your stuff in, in the shed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. It makes sense. Manscaped loves naming their stuff. It's fun. The Shed Travel Bag. That's funny. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, and right now you can get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash footballers. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash footballers. What are you waiting for? And Foot Clan, they say that Thursday is the new Friday, but with First Leaf Wine Club, every day can <laughs> they feel say like Friday. Oh, wait. oh, yeah. Especially with Thursday Night Football. Oh, Monday, Thursday good. football coming. And when you don't like show up at work on Friday. <laughs> it's like it a makes Friday. It, yeah. it really yeah. helps. Either way, First Leaf Wine Club's got you covered. They deliver high-quality wines from all around the world right to you. And, and here's the best part. They take care of all the guest work for you. That's that's what I love about it. You go to First Leaf Wine, and, and you take a quiz, and they learn all about your likes, dislikes. Do you like, you know, I like sweeter reds. That's what I like. Maybe you don't. You like drier whites. What, whatever you like, you you say what you like. Then they send you uh, six wines, and every time you try wine, you rate it, you tell them what you like or didn't like, and your wines get better and better, more tailored for you. I believe my next box shows up today. The subscriptions are super flexible, and they have 100% satisfaction guarantee. So join today uh, with our link, and you can get a six-hand picked bottle package of wine for $29.95 plus free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's six bottles of wine for only $5 a bottle and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. Join the 100,000 plus people who are already enjoying the most personalized wine club. The Seattle Seahawks take on the Buffalo Bills. Seahawks 6-1, and one, Bills 6-2. and This will be a fun one. The Seahawks are three-point road favorites. Mm. And the over-under... 
Yes, sir. I thought you were going for under. a different button. I did and I was too. Like, wow. I thought I thought he was reaching. He was he was leading and reaching, and I was like, "Is this going to be an almost upset here?" Oh, I thought maybe you were talking about the uh... unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Is he going to be unlimited in this one is the question. The Buffalo Bills, uh, the defense has been a little bit disappointing this year. Uh, yeah, I love it. 12th against opposing fantasy quarterback. You love what? You love it for Russ? Yeah, I, I absolutely love. There's nothing better for fantasy than a bad defense and a good offense. That's that's the the recipe for success. Is that the, I, I don't feel like Buffalo's a bad defense. I feel like they're a middle-of-the-road defense. But year. I think they were expected to be great. Uh, last year they were much more stout, and they're middle of the road now. And and the, the Seattle's defense stinks. So I love this game. I love the fifty-five point over/under. I think Josh Allen's going to be able to keep up. Obviously, we know Russ can do what, whatever he wants. He just he's out there being all unlimited. Unlimited. And so uh, I this is one of those games I want. I want pieces of this game. All right, uh, let's talk about Josh Allen. It's been a a bumpy road. Are we getting the? Uh, Ooh, excellent. Are we getting the stallion this week? I would say so because it is Seattle. They are thirty-second best against fantasy quarterbacks. Everybody has been getting in, in on the party of scoring fantasy points uh, against them. Twenty-second against running backs. Thirty-second against wide receivers. I mean, everybody is in play here for the Buffalo Bills. I would prefer Zach Moss. It seems like the the, the the tea leaves are trending for sure this time in the direction of Zach Moss. He gets the high fantasy value carries near the goal line, two touchdowns last week. Singletary did have a fine week. Same amount of carries. Yeah, same amount of carries. I still employ a I don't play Devin Singletary. I still haven't been convinced that I actually want him in my fantasy lineup. For example, Singletary or Philip Lindsay? Ooh, that's a good one. I was going to say, they I will, definitely hang out. I mean, those guys are best friends. I was going to say, I will play Todd Gurley over Devin Singletary. I uh, would play Todd Gurley over Zach Moss as well, personally. I would play them over That either. one's pretty close. And to answer Andy's question, because I loved it, I would play Philip Lindsay over Devin Singletary. While Devin Singletary is, I think, great, he can make he, – he never gets tackled on the first – guy he, but he doesn't have breakaway speed whereas Philip Lindsay has that and that's what you're going to need if either one of these guys they you need an outside the 20 yard line touchdown and, and Philip Lindsay can do that Devin Singletary can't we have seen Zach Moss uh with the the Dolly Parton he has out touched single carry nine to five Woo! inside the 10 yard line, 10 yard line while playing in three fewer games that actually uh surprises me in the favor of Singletary the fact that that's the case what, but I guess Singletary missed. Uh, he, he had those opportunities probably when Moss was out. Yeah, that's what okay. we're saying is he's out-touched him despite playing three Got fewer it. games. Chris Carson won't practice until tomorrow. If he's in, you need to start him in yeah. this one. Buffalo struggled uh, tremendously against running backs. Now, Carlos Hyde is already out, so we do know wow, he's, really? he's mm. gone. Yeah, But Travis Homer, 100% in. DJ Dallas last week had 23 touches on 79% of snaps. I don't think it stays that way even if Carson misses. You think Travis Homer will be more involved? I think he'll be more involved because Homer was dealing with injury and they were really quick this year, uh, this week to come out and say Homer's fine. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean Dallas isn't the better play of the two. I just would be, you're really risking things starting DJ Dallas in this game because Dallas was super inefficient. And you need the touchdown. If you don't get the touchdown, if it goes to Homer, uh, you're getting nothing out of DJ Dallas. I, I mean, it, I guess this is obviously dependent upon whether or not Chris Carson starts. If Chris Carson starts, you start him and nobody else. But if Carson is out, I, I think I would re-roll DJ Dallas just because the matchup is good and the points are going to be scored. They're, uh, you know, a a road favorite team and a fifty-five and a half point over under. Obviously, if it switches to Homer, then 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 you're right. But what we saw last week was DJ Dallas was the next man up. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you have to make a judgment call there. Um, not not a fun situation in that backfield right now. Mm -hmm. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Yeah, you always play them. Stephon Diggs. Yep, he's leading the NFL in targets right now, averaging 87 yards per game. He will get his in this game. 
and uh, he will probably get a lot more than his. He'll get a, a like a bonus gift from the mm-hmm. Seattle secondary, giving up 43 fantasy points a game to opposing oh, 43 wide receivers. 43 fantasy points a game. Here's the thing. Those points have to go That's to not crazy. just Stephon Diggs. Uh, you could play Cole Beasley. I think you could play John Brown. We're going to yeah. talk about him in a little bit. He is uh, a really perfect archetype for this matchup against what beats Seattle. Now, he did not practice. Yeah, the, he didn't practice, record. but uh, it, it's that was Wednesday. Well, that remains to be seen if John Brown's going to miss time, but I wanted to highlight Cole Beasley. Seattle has been getting crushed by slot-wide receivers, Julian Edelman, Russell Gage, CeeDee Lamb, even... Old man Larry Fitzgerald put up a pretty solid stat line, 8 for 62. Before last week's debacle of a two-target game for Cole Beasley, he was averaging seven targets a game. I would throw the last week out, too, with the weather situation. Yeah, exactly. So is, I, it, is Cole it Beasley smart. In, Okay. It he, seems like a smart play, especially with John Brown. He's still easing himself back into this offense. Brown might represent more of a distraction that uh, affords things for Diggs and Beasley. The offense is better with him in there. Um, that being said, Cole Beasley or McCall Hardman after last week? Ooh, man. that The, the, the Hardman thing is so hard to navigate <laughs> because we, we've we never seen anything like that, that that type of involvement. They don't even call him easy, man. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh. That question is hard, That was man. a good one. Uh, <laughs> but we've never seen that, even though it should have happened weeks ago. When Sammy Watkins left, they went to Demarcus Robinson. I think my my faith in the targets for Cole Beasley is higher. So let's say if you're in a half or a full point yep. PPR, I would go Cole Beasley. If it's standard, sure, I'll take the shot for Hardman. Chicago Bears five and three taking on the Tennessee Titans at five and two. Titans are six point favorites in this one. Uh, it's a forty six and a half point over under. I can't believe I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, you should. Andy's almost upset of the week. Yeah. I, the, the Bears just stay in games. Do you want to oh, throw, throw the cards? Um, You want me to do it? I'm asking if you want to do it. It's really fun. Okay. Yeah, oh, I'd like I'd like a shot. Celebration of Matt now, Nagy. Now, I, I got to get the sound right. Ready? Gonna, yep. Ah! <laughs> It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Go to YouTube. Check it out. <laughs> See, it's fun. Uh, yeah. I mean, he does have a magic touch this year. Even in games they lose, they stay in them. I can't believe the Titans have a six-point uh, line in this one. The way the Titans played last week, they it's, were super disappointing in the passing game. Yeah, they're in every game, and it's always surprising. But they're in every game because of their defense. Yeah. It's surprising because of their offense. It's This is pretty simple to figure out. Their defense has just been outstanding, and I I wondered if it would take a step back this year. It did not. There is a crazy step. They have not given up a quarterback one performance. The Chicago Bears haven't. To anyone outside of Patrick Mahomes Which, since that's forgivable. week 11 yeah. of the 2018 season. What? Not all year this no. year. No. Not all year last year. <laughs> I mean... That says this is you know Ryan Tannehill's bench. Been, Ryan Tannehill. I yes. agree. Yeah, I, and Tannehill's had a couple of weeks uh, in a row. Mind you, again forgivable. It's Pittsburgh, but then Cincinnati last week disappointing. Outside the top twelve for Ryan Tannehill in a game you expected him to be there, and um, you just got to sit him down in this one. The the Bears defense is too good, and the recipe is going to be you know Derrick Henry, and they're, they're going to give him the opportunities. You never sit Derrick Henry. He'll be in your lineup. And you're still playing A.J. Brown. I mean, he's a A.J. Brown's great. But Corey Davis, who has emerged, he's averaging nearly 14 fantasy points a game. Are you willing to roll him out in this matchup? Uh, so like I view, Corey, Corey Davis or Cole Beasley? I would play Corey Davis over Cole Beasley. Okay. Um, both of those guys are players I would I would hope I can pivot off of and, and go to someone with a little bit – you know, Cole Beasley has a high floor, but I don't know that he's got the ceiling. Uh, Corey Davis has a lot of risk here in this matchup. I want Corey Davis on my roster, but I don't view him as a must-start every week. He's a great matchup play. This is a bad matchup, so I would I would prefer to bench him. What about John New Smith? Are you moving forward oh, with somebody man. else? I mean, this week, uh, you know, are you – it's the opposite of staying in the flames with John New Smith right yeah. now. He's had some rough games in a row. I Ross Dwelly. If Jordan Reed's out or Jonu Smith, oh my 
gosh. I, I mean, here's what's brutal is the Chicago Bears have been beat by tight ends. I mean, you had Jared Jared Cook last week. The Rams put up Jared Cook? the Jared fifth Cook. most points at the tight end position two weeks ago. Tampa Bay, the Colts, Detroit week one. I mean, they have been susceptible to the tight end position, but John o. Smith has been just just removed from this offense, man. It's I Weeks one through five, he's averaged fifteen fantasy points per game. Week six through eight, it's two fantasy points a game. And the targets have just disappeared. Two All targets. That being four, said, two. I don't think they're gonna they're gonna be able to throw outside as much as they want to. I, I will play Johnny Smith over Ross Dwelly. I agree. I, I, I will too. Uh, John o. Smith is a more talented player than Ross Dwelly. Ross Dwelly is just an opportunity yep. play. He might get enough targets to where he's. Uh, he, he, what about could, Hayden Hurst? I'd play Hurst. I would play Hurst. Okay. A little safer? Yeah. It's a little scary. All right. Uh, Allen Robinson, put him in your lineup yep. every week. David Montgomery, put him in your lineup every week. I mean, the opportunities are through the roof. I, I don't have the exact stat in front of me. He is something like third fourth or fifth and like total routes run um yeah the the injury to Tariq Cohen was a very big deal for Montgomery I mean we are going now on five consecutive weeks with mm -hmm. five or more targets Oof, for that Montgomery is delicious and yeah, it's a 92 target pace oh, yeah. and if you watched the game last week like I had some people when we were we were kind of giving Montgomery a hard time <laughs> come out and say look this line this line is so bad he has no opportunity to do anything Last week, he had a 38-yard run. He had 21 rushing attempts. And Tennessee's defense has been super disappointing. So uh, you play Montgomery. Mike mentioned the, uh, you know. You could take the shot on Darnell Mooney. Yeah, deep league uh, shop opportunity. And uh, Jimmy Grandpa, are we just kind of dunzo there? I don't think so. I mean, D Jimmy Grandpa is going to stink most weeks. But what he is is going to be. Uh, the rest of season, he you're just hoping that near the goal line he gets target. He's still getting targets near the goal line, even in the games where he doesn't come down with it. it he's a crapshoot at tight end. I don't want to start him. It, he is in that list of names where if you've got to take a a gamble, if you had Kittle and you lost him, you got to pick someone off of waivers. I would play him over Dwelly. Over Dwelly? Yeah, he was uh in last week. I mean, I I really liked Jimmy Graham going against the Saints. He had seven targets. He only turned that into two for thirteen. But if you watch the game, there was a there, Jimmy Graham took a shot, and you could see that he was physically uncomfortable. Like he got hurt, and he did miss Wednesday's practice mm. with, uh, and he's now questionable with a knee injury. So it, that's something to monitor because the the knee injury really hampered him last week. Yeah, that that is something to monitor. Yeah, he needs those at a hundred percent to run at sixty. Yeah, old man knees. Yeah. Baltimore five and two taking on the Indianapolis Colts at five and two. Another uh, great matchup this week. The Ravens are two and a half point road favorites. Uh, it's a forty-seven point over under. In my opinion, that line shows a great deal of respect for what the Colts have been able to do this year. And the past couple of weeks, they've been pretty good for Phillip Rivers. And this defense, we know, formidable. Sixth against quarterbacks, eighth against or seventh against running backs, second against tight ends. This is not a situation where, you know, it's a 47-point over-under. I'd be taking the under in this game. Uh, it hasn't been smooth sailing for Lamar Jackson behind center, you know, throwing the football. And, you know, one of the question marks in this game is the Ravens. Uh, Marlon Humphrey got added to the COVID list. There are close contacts. There's a chance that they could be losing some of their defensive uh, starters here, but. Yeah, they had seven defensive players added to the list, six uh, important players, real big Patrick pieces. Patrick Queen of their, was one of them, yeah, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, Judon was one of them. I mean, really great players on defense. Now, they are – They're the close contact. They're the close contact that the timeline says if, the, if all their tests come back negative, they should be there. They won't be practicing this week, but they should be there. But at least pay attention because, obviously, we, we don't want to play against the Baltimore Ravens. I talked about on the waiver show, I'm – who, which running back from the Colts am I going to start? None of them. Obviously, if they're missing like half their defense, that changes a little bit. Um, but I don't expect them to be missing half their defense. And really, when I look at the options that you want to start in a game that has two great defenses like this, it's hard to find names. I mean, J.K. Dobbins, yeah, I'll, I'll start him. 
Well, even if you pretend the Colts are facing a nice, soft, uh, luxurious run defense, even if you pretend, how do you uh, – is it Taylor ahead of Ooh. Wilkins after what happened last week? Is it – you know, what do you do there? Yeah, I feel like it's got to be Wilkins ahead of Taylor right now because Ugh. of the, the current nicked-up injury that Taylor has and what Wilkins did last week. Taylor's best fantasy finish on the year was RB9, which I think was two weeks ago. Last week, Jordan Wilkins was the RB6 and Hines was the RB7. So whenever you have three to choose from against Baltimore, it is uh, it makes it difficult. Taylor Mike, did. I need you to weigh in, though. Taylor or Wilkins? If you're staring that down, you picked up Wilkins because you were the Taylor right. manager, and you said, hey, I need both. I'm monitoring the injury reports. Taylor was limited on Wednesday. If I see any sort of limited. full... If I see a full practice report from from Johnny Taylor, I'm pl I'm putting him in. Okay, over right. over Jordan Wilkins. I think it's real tight. I think it's close, and I I would go Taylor too if that was the case. If he was healthy, I would go Taylor and just hope. Like last week, he had one goal line opportunity. He gets in there. He's similar production to Wilkins, even though he was banged up. So, uh, Lamar Jackson in this game. Uh, are you pivoting from Lamar Jackson against the Colts? Lamar is. Our quarterback, nine on the week. And uh, a lot kind of came out this week about, you know, targets to Hollywood Brown. Squeaky and wheel. Look, here's his. Here's if he tries to, it's not like he hasn't targeted him ever, right? When you try to target Hollywood Brown, you still have to get it in the vicinity. Still have to give him a catchable ball. And that's what's been so infuriating because. Hollywood is open. Hollywood's frustrated. He wants more targets, but he wants the targets to hit him in the hands, and that's not been happening. If you look at Lamar Jackson. Three out of seven weeks for Lamar Jackson inside the top ten, by the way. Sorry, go on. Yeah, you, you say three out of seven inside the top ten. Uh, I'm going to go with four of those seven outside the top 16. Oof. He's not been – He's been someone that has Where's hurt the floor, man? Your fantasy. Where's exactly. the floor? He's this mobile quarterback. He's supposed to be a, a top 10 baseline, and it's not happening. This is a bad matchup. So the question is, who would you pivot? Who would you be willing to pivot? Because you obviously know the ceiling of Lamar Jackson is uh, just about unmatched. But would you play, let's say, Lamar Jackson or like Ben Roethlisberger against Dallas? You are asking a very specific question. <laughs> <laughs> towards me uh i uh in our league of record i picked up big ben over the weekend which i hope you follow us on social media i advised if you are a quarterback streamer you should pick up ben because he has three juicy matchups coming up i picked him up i didn't know i was going to be able to trade for lamar jackson i i traded low hoping that he returns to being a weak winning type of a quarterback I am going with Lamar Jackson over Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, I'm I'm hoping the squeaky wheel for Marquise Brown pays off. Here's a tweet from Jared Smola pointing out Marquise Brown has seen 16 targets, 20 plus yards down the field. 16 targets, five have been catchable. This is what Hollywood Brown has been dealing with with Lamar Jackson. One catch, right? Last week, one for three yards. Yeah, it was just, it was the, the, the touchdown. Uh, Almost had another touchdown, but it got o overturned. Uh, I I believe in Lamar Jackson, the player, and hoping that they kind of had you know the the meeting of we need to get Hollywood Brown some of those easier targets and figure that out. And Philip Rivers has been playing great. If there's any anybody missing on the defensive side for the Ravens, this game it has the potential to be higher scoring. I'm with you, Andy. That it's probably going to be the under, but. There, the world does exist where this game has more points on the board than you're expecting. I would still be, because of what I see Big Ben's ceiling being now, which is not very high. I mean, Big Ben traditionally, his entire career has been a not, you know, huge ceiling type of player, except for kind of the hate. Every once in a while. Every once in a while. And then the Antonio Brown year where he had 5,000 passing yards. I would be with you. I'd be playing Lamar Jackson for the ceiling because, uh, you know, he can win you a week. He won so many fantasy players weeks last year. Uh, Ingram's not practicing. Dobbins is a uh, a cautious start. Oh, uh, Dobbins is in, but both Dobbins and Gus Edwards are starts for me. Yeah, I, it's just if the Colts do what they've done, which is 17 fantasy points, and you break it up between the two of them, mm -hmm. it uh, is not not great. Pittsburgh, same story. Uh, the Ravens can run. I I, yeah. I agree. And Martin, with you. like Mark Ingram has been really really bad, and Mark Ingram has been hampering this run game. These two players, Dobbins and the Gus Bus. They're getting it done. They did lose Ronnie Stanley, which will hurt their offensive line. Uh, they, sure. They, 
granted, they looked good without him for yeah. the second half of that game. I would start J.K. Dobbins. Gus Edwards is a uh, – is a, a, a you can, but I don't want to. Who wins the game? Do you guys have a prediction in this one? I've got Baltimore. Yeah, I'll take Baltimore. I think the Colts hold on at home. Interesting. They've been playing really good. Uh, my my final quick Superman note here. Superman plays good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, playing well. My my quick note here for the Colts: pay attention to uh, the wide receiver core. T. Y. Hilton is is hurt. T. Y. Hilton has been uh, retired uh, ceremoniously on this show for fantasy purposes. Michael Pittman, their second round rookie pick, returned. He didn't see much action this past week, but pay attention to him. The schedule for the Colts wide receivers moving through the rest of the season is very, very advantageous. So pay attention. I know it's crazy to even say Zach Pascal, but – but but uh, If you're picking one, that's who I pick. I'm just saying keep your eye on one of those guys. You might want to stash one uh, for the upcoming schedule. All right. Uh, Panthers, Chiefs. Panthers at 3-5 and five, heading to Arrowhead, taking on the Chiefs who are 7-1. and one. Chiefs are 10.5-point favorites. It's a 52.5-point over-under. Um. Yeah, I mean, I would probably pick the Chiefs here. All right. Uh, but, you know, Mahomes in your lineup. Running back sadness in Kansas City <laughs> for a lot of people trying to, you know, have confidence. Are you flexing? Are you are you starting Clyde as a uh, top 24 guy this week? I'm still starting Clyde Edwards as a top 24 guy. It's the Carolina Panthers. They have been ravaged by fantasy running backs. Le'Veon Bell is worth a flex. Uh, we we still haven't seen an actual what the real timeshare will be in a regular game. A ten and a half point spread says this game might not be. There are it, no it regular another games regular. For the Chiefs. Well, we've we've had a few this year. We've we've had a few of them. But I'm playing Clyde, Clyde Edwards Alaire. He still ran 24 routes last week compared to Bell's 11. Uh, I know that the carries were split, but. I'll I'll go one more time. I'll take one more punch to the face. The one with thing, Edwards. W yeah, I mean, I I think I think Edwards. You could start him as a top twenty four guy. I don't think his ceiling is very high, but he should be good. Carolina's a good matchup. Now, Carolina's been when they've been beat on the ground by running backs. It's been in on, in the end zone touchdowns, and I think that's more Lev Bell than Clyde Edwards Alaire. We we don't have enough evidence other than to say Clyde Edwards Alaire has not been able to get it down on the goal line. Uh, very well so far in his rookie year, and we historically, when Lev Bell gets around the end zone, you know he's he's got a nose. So um, I I think that both of them you can start as kind of that running back twenty four twenty five two three. You could play Tyreek Hill each and every week. He's consistently uh, been involved, and then Travis Kelsey obviously is in your lineup. Beyond that, we talked about Hardman earlier. You know, trusting him, you can't. Uh, can you take a flyer on him any week? There's Always. no difference between Hardman and and taking a flyer on somebody like Hollywood. In fact, you know, very similar in terms of, you know, make a big play. You know, you've got speed, you've got big playability. Hardman was very involved last week. You can take the shot. Chris McCaffrey should return in this game. Do you expect him to be eased in? Like, are, are there reasons to believe that McCaffrey is not a top twelve type of player in his first week back due to just trying not to overload him? I think that would just be guesswork. That would be saying I'm guessing that That's what they're we do, going buddy. to ease him in. <laughs> and Have you listened to our show? But the fact that they have taken their time with this injury, the timeline, this is on the longer end of the timeline. I think they've waited until he's ready. They're not in a position where they're wanting to get him back early and, and, and re-injure him. So I expect him to come in and probably have 75% of the work, which is enough when you're Christian McCaffrey to have a great game. Yeah, there's there's the concerns of he maybe he's uh worked in slower. You're playing Christian McCaffrey. But then there's also the Mike Davis has been very very good. The coaching staff has thrown their endorsement behind Mike Davis as they as he earned. Like Davis is still going to get some touches in this. Uh, what does that turn into though? Is that six opportunities for Davis? Is that 12 opportunities for Davis? Cuz those that adds up. And, and takes away from McCaffrey, but you're still playing CMC as a top 10 guy. DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. Are you playing both in this matchup? Or are you playing? Yeah, I'll play both. Okay, we have them both uh, on the back of the wide receiver two category. Uh, although last week was, it wasn't nice for DJ Moore. Correct. 
two very late catches in that game after being kind of goosed. Yeah, oh. but how many yards? Oh. Uh, this is DJ- What's his catch rate this year? What? You is didn't know really? that? No. You didn't know that? <laughs> DJ Moore is is a boom bust. How many total player? catches will he have this year? <laughs> How but, many times are you gonna hit that button? <laughs> but he has been he's been performing more than he hasn't. I have faith in him and I'm I'm playing him. Okay. I mean, how many did you had like three? It's fifty fifty. He's a fifty fifty guy. Not fifty five, but he's fifty fifty. What is, what is his current rank? Because he's like a he's a top fifteen wide receiver on the season right now. I, I believe. If he is, that would shock me. He's only been inside the top fifteen uh, three Mike's times. Right. DJ Moore is the wide receiver year. fifteen. In so half fifteen play. on the dot. Yeah, I, but I, I'm just saying I'm looking at his game log right now, and he's had four startable weeks, and he's sure. had four complete busts. Like his bad weeks are bad. They're yes. very bad. Yeah, so I, I'm not, I I'm not saying that. you can't start him. I'm just trying to look at him and say. What are we getting? And uh, he can always break a big play. The game script says they're going to have to throw the football a ton. And mm-hmm. and so uh, there you go. Curtis Samuel's been sneaky lately. They, they use him, they've they used him in the backfield. If Christian McCaffrey's back, that won't happen. Uh, I don't think any of us are chasing the points on Curtis Samuel. He's worth a speculative ad, but I, I can't imagine playing him. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move forward with our starts of the week. We'll get to the rest of the matchups on tomorrow's podcast. Starts of the week. All right, volunteers to kick it off. I'll kick it off. Anybody else? Anybody else? With Big Herb. <laughs> oh. Justin Herbert is my start of the week. We've been talking about, look, he's a rookie sensation. He's been on fire, then the shoe's going to drop. He's not going to be great forever. And I'm saying the shoe's going to drop next week against Miami, but not this week. This is my second favorite game of the week where I want a lot of pieces in. They are favored with a 51.5 point over under. Over the last five weeks, th- this is this is pretty fascinating stuff. Over the last five weeks, the team that has given up the most fantasy points per game to the quarterback position is the Chargers. The second most to the quarterback position is the Raiders. And that includes being the second most despite last week's Weather Bowl where Baker did nothing. Adding that in, these are the two worst teams over the last, you know, over a month of football at, you know, fancy points to quarterback. So I that love is fascinating. It. I know it just it projects to be a real high flying affair. And over that same five week span, of course, Herbert is the quarterback too. He's only zero point nine points per game behind Kyler Murray. Uh, Justin Herbert's someone that you if you've been having fun starting him, mm-hmm. keep doing it. Also, uh, just throwing it out there before Mike brings you his quarterback start of the week. Unlike last week, we don't have, at least from what I can tell, any games that are, as oh. Jason would say, weathery That's concerns. Um, you have a little bit of wind maybe in the Saints-Buccaneers game, but it's looking oh, the weather's great this, this a week. lot nicer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to jump on Jason's shoulders here. Uh, I'm taking the quarterback on the other side of the ball, Derek Carr. Jason laid some things out, but I want to – Send in the car. <laughs> yes. Send in the car. I will send him in, and I just wanted to highlight before weathery gate of last week, he was averaging 23 fantasy points per week, and over the past five weeks, the Chargers have been giving up nearly 26 points to the quarterback. It's it's a as Jason said, it's a great matchup. I, I want pieces. I feel really robbed of my car support because last week I was all in on mm-hmm. car before the weather started breaking, and I was like, man, I wanted. To see that happen, and it looks like it's going to be another week until it does, and I'm, I'm in with you guys. All right, Josh Allen's my quarterback start of the week against Seattle. He has four consecutive weeks outside the top 15 at the quarterback position, which, you know, that gives you wobbly knees as a fantasy manager of Josh Allen. But this is a Seattle defense that's given up a top 10 performance in all but one week of the season. I think he gets back on track in this high-scoring Barn burner. I this, agree. This two, should be the start of the century. Two, Josh Allen, we're talking to you. Yeah, come on, Josh Stallion. Be excellent. Uh, yeah, two two of Josh Allen's last three games have been super bad weather, and this one projects no rain, no wind, and a very nice 69 degrees. Uh, at running back, Chase Edmonds, start of the week. Yeah. Uh, I, there's just about nobody out there that you wouldn't draft – in the top three picks that I would start over Chase Edmonds 
This is what I wanted with Kenyon Drake this year. I wanted the Arizona Cardinals running game. Their pace of play and what they've done has been great last year. You know, we talked about the fact that whoever was the weekly starter was the running back three. And Chase, Chase has been a top 20 back in four of seven weeks. He's been a top 10 back in two of his last three and he's been the backup. <laughs> so now he's the guy. And I've been listening to local uh, beat reporters. We're here in Arizona. And they are saying that the backup, because people have been asking, who is the backup to Chase? There's a handful of guys it could be. And they are pretty much universally saying that the backup to Chase Edmonds is Chase Edmonds. Oof. And All right. he's, he's All right. just going to be the guy. So uh, I think. So when he needs a breather, he comes in for himself. Exactly. He's going to run <laughs> to the sideline. Run back in, be like, I'm up. Now, I, I should throw this out there just so that people understand. Right now, and I traded for Chase Edmonds, Kenyon Drake is considered day-to-day. -day. Yes. So he did not practice on Wednesday, but this injury is not considered severe. He could, he literally could be activated for this week. We don't expect it, but that's the way Cliff Kingsbury is talking about the injury. And if he's activated this week, I still think you can start Chase Edmonds because I can't think they're going to run him into the ground. And the matchup against the Dolphins – uh, look, last week they didn't give up a top 12 performance to running back, but that was, you know, when Daryl Henderson got injured, the previous four games they had done it every single week. All right, I'm jumping in here. My running back start of the week, San Francisco's Jamichael Hasty. He gets to take on the Green Bay Packers, who in six of seven games they have given up top 10 production to the running back position. This team will not have Devo, Kittle. They, now they don't have Ayuk. They don't have Kendrick Bourne. Yeah, they won't have Jimmy Garoppolo. And you might say, whoa, whoa. Do they have any offense at all? It, like, what happened the last time these guys played? Well, I, I've already highlighted Raheem Mostert's domination in the playoff game. I don't know if people remember this. Do you know how many times Jimmy Garoppolo threw the ball in that matchup, the playoff matchup against the Green Wasn't Bay Packers? Wasn't it like eight times or something? Eight yeah. times. They didn't need to throw because this is the perfect matchup for Kyle Shanahan. His run scheme is great, and it, it the Green Bay Packers' run defense is terrible. I'm playing Jamichael Hasty with confidence. Tonight. Yeah, I think the only way it goes sideways is if Green Bay gets up big real early and you end up having to see more of the passing game from Nick Mullins. But I like it. Uh, James Conner against Dallas is my start of the week. You know, everything in this game screams smash play for James Conner. They cannot stop the run, being Dallas. Um last in fantasy points against to the running back position over the last five weeks. And Dallas is not going to score very many points no. against Pittsburgh. I think this is two touchdown territory here for James Conner. Could be a very, very good week. And at wide receiver, my start of the week was going to be John Brown on the basis of health. Practiced in full last week, made it through the entire game. He's healthy. But if he's downgraded, I mean, that was the concern with John Brown. He was downgraded with the knee on a Wednesday, and you say, oh, maybe that's just a rest day. He practiced in full last Wednesday with this knee injury. So this is a concern. I still I still think you could throw him out there because if, if he's in the game, this is a great smash play, but I'm not going to make him my start of the week. Instead, I'm going with Antonio Brown oh. to give confidence. <laughs> if you picked him up, can you play him in week one? I don't know. Can you? I think you can, and here's why. We have seen it before off the street, short practice with Tom Brady, comes in and gets eight targets. And and while that's a good number, here's what you need to remember about that game. He got eight targets with 55, 56 yards and a touchdown on only 33% of the snaps. They used him in a limited fashion, and when he was on the field, Tom said, Oh, you're open. Oh, you're open. And I think that's going to happen again this week. The matchup is good against the Saints. Last week, they gave up 47 points to the wide receiver position. The week prior, 51. The week prior, 44. You split that up. I think Antonio Brown is someone you can play this week. My wide receiver start of the week. It is Hollywood Marquise Brown. I am calling my shot on this one. Not only do you have the squeaky wheel narrative where he had his little passive-aggressive attack on social media, that has already been acknowledged by Lamar Jackson saying, I got to figure out a way to get my number one guy more involved. Then on top of that, you look at the uh, the cornerback matchup from Pro Football Focus that they are projecting. He projects to see Rocky Sin uh, from the Colts, who has been uh, weak at, at the cornerback position. Rock is a 4-5 guy. 
he's going to get torched by Hollywood Brown when he is the one who is covering him. They are pretty. The Colts are sturdy against the run. Uh, let's see if they have to throw a little bit more. I like Hollywood Brown to have a uh, a, a solid solid performance. Cousins Con starts of the week. I'm not. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, hey, they're Antonio. cousins. I'm not calling it the Hollywood top five. Just saying, this will be one of the weeks where he comes through. Justin Jefferson against Detroit is my wide receiver start of the week. We saw the Delvin Cook experience last week. I mean, we see that every week. Mm -hmm. uh, but I expect a huge game from Jefferson in this one. The weather uh, situation last week really forced a dependence on the running game. We didn't get to see them throw the ball against Green Bay. And listen, they played Detroit. There is one wide receiver core that Detroit has slowed down the entire year, and that would be a team that doesn't really have any wide receivers, the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, you know, just a smash play opportunity for Jefferson. And if you pick the right week with Justin Jefferson, that is a top three type of performance. We've seen it multiple times this year. And uh, and so, yeah, get back, get healthy, Matthew Stafford. Let's get this game yeah, up above that uh, over-under. All right, at tight end, I am starting Noah Fant as my start of the week this week. Atlanta gives up by far and away the most points to the tight end position. In fact, Atlanta has given up a top 10 fantasy finish, uh, total points given up on, on the week every single week of the year, asterisks that they haven't played against Ian Thomas. Ian Thomas hasn't <laughs> gotten it done two Ian times. Ian Thomas is the ruiner of trends. <laughs> yes, but if you have a tight end, and, you're, and, and listen to the teams that they've given up these top 10 tight end weeks, Seattle, Dallas, Chicago, Green Bay, Minnesota, Detroit. This, is, this isn't Kelsey and Kittle and Waller and Andrews. These right. are just decent tight ends that are a part of an offense, and Fant has been part of this offense. He was back up to 78% of snaps this last week after an injury. He had nine targets last week. He's a huge part of the offense. It's a perfect matchup, and it there was concern of you know Albert Okwebenam, the fact that he's looked great. Do you know how many targets he had last week now that Fant was back up to his normal snaps? He had one target. Mm. He was on the field for 25% of the snaps. This is no offense uh, team right now. He's the, the center of the offense, and it's a great matchup. If you need a streaming tight end off of the waiver wire, which you, you might, I like Eric Ebron this week against Dallas. Uh, Andy highlighted you know the, the matchup of Pittsburgh against Dallas, but I want to point out since the bye week, Eric Ebron is seeing a 17% target share. That is very healthy for the tight end position. 88% of Pittsburgh's tight end targets in that time. He has taken the job. He is the full-time pass catching tight end. Uh, the Vance dance has been relegated to being a blocking tight end. So I think that if you're looking on the wire in desperation, Eric Ebron is where I would look. Yeah, I will go with a tight end that had a 24% target share last week. I would prefer been... that to 17. I see you're 17 and I <laughs> raise you 24. Uh, TJ Hawkinson against Minnesota. He is desperately needed by this offense right now. Kenny Galladay will be out. Minnesota is 19th against opposing fantasy tight ends. He's actually been a top five tight end. Hawkinson has been in two straight weeks and saw double-digit targets for only the second time in his career last week mm. he is becoming uh reliable which is something that you hadn't been able to say about him previously so i am i'm encouraged by the production from tj hawkinson and believe he is a smash play now i glanced in my peripheral vision at jason and he was already beginning to smirk which terrifies me yeah, so let's baby. uh let's move forward with our favorite segment Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. This week, I'm going with a guy who's way cool. So pick up and oh, play no. the Falcons young, way cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby. It's the like you're... It's devolving. Yes, it is. It's no uh, longer about a, a rhyme. It is now... About a cringe. Yeah, that's rough. I like, I thought it was way I like cool, it. personally. I like it. I wait, would, I would wait, have, cool? Wait, I cool. would have preferred it had you dropped the L on cool. And it's been, I'm, uh, Young way. Yeah, but no, I didn't no. want you to know where I was going. <laughs> 
<laughs> so. Wait, you would have preferred it if he rhymed coup with coup? Yes. Uh. It, at least... It, it, that would have been, been better cool. than cool. That would have been pretty like, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's, a, that's a cool dude. Rankings for week nine, the start sit tool, all the premium tools and uh, community. You can find it all at the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We want to say thank you, not to Jason for that rhyme, but mm. to Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. A signed Deontay Johnson mini helmet yesterday, $51.60. That is nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit, and we will be back tomorrow. The rest of the matchups, hopefully positive news in the, on the injury front for a number of players, and we'll bring it to you tomorrow. Stay safe, everybody. Get some sleep. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.